Welcome to episode 56 of the series about security podcast for September 18, 2013, brought to you by the Center for Education and Research in Information Insurance and Security, or Sirius, at Purdue University. I'm Preston Wiley, and I'm joined again by Keith Watson and Mike Hill. And Mike will have the first and seems like only uh, topic for today. Yeah, well, I think we can make this work. Um, so later today, iOS 7 is coming out in anticipation of the new iPhone 5S and 5C, uh, which is going to be released on September 20th. Um, so the iPhone 5S is going to have a new feature that none of the previous iPhones have had, and that's a fingerprint scanner. And there's been a lot of speculation about um, you know, how effective it's going to be. Uh, there's been some security concerns that have come out, so I thought this would be an interesting topic to discuss with the timeliness of, like I said, iOS 7 coming out just later today. Um, so the fingerprint scanner is going to be built into the home button, and you're essentially going to, you know, be able to unlock your device, much like the, the pin does currently. I've not seen anything yet that says anything about it being used for two-factor. It's not hard to imagine that maybe in the future, or maybe it, it will be rolled out, that you could maybe have a pin and a fingerprint for unlocking your phone. I think the uh, the idea from Apple is the convenience of basically you know, being able to just touch the home button and unlock the, the phone, so it'll be a very convenient feature. Um, but considering all the recent news you know, about the NSA, like we talked about last week, there's, there's obviously some concerns. Um, Apple has said that um, they only store the fingerprint in the A7 chip on the device itself. So there's no going up into the cloud, there's no way mechanism in place for them to essentially catalog all these fingerprints and keep them in like a master database. Um, now, one of the things that people have been asking me is, you know, how secure is a fingerprint? And I, I've seen some interesting articles that, that uh, they're not necessarily posted in this in, in the article section, they're, they're kind of just humorous in, in a sense. Uh, one of the articles I'd seen earlier this week was, a, you know, it showed a, a little kid uh, next to her dad, and her dad's a, a, asleep in the chair, and he's got his hand on his phone, and uh, she goes, well, how's it, you know, the article was, how secure is it? And the kid's just basically pushing the, the thumb down on the phone to unlock it, so kind of instant access because, you know, they have the fingerprint right there available to them, and they can unlock the phone. Um, another article I had seen talked about how this uh, fingerprint scanner requires it to be from a live source, a live finger essentially, um, and that sever you know, severing someone's finger, taking their phone and taking their finger essentially will not get you into the device because it's not a living, breathing finger at that point. And apparently there's some auto manufacturers where that has been the case. All it takes is a fingerprint, it doesn't have to be from a live source, so some people lost their cars and their finger in the process. So uh, Apple is saying, no, that's not the case here. It has to be from, from a live finger. So I guess one of the other concerns would be if they take your phone, they might take you with it just so they can have your fingerprint to, to unlock it. Uh, though I don't think that's really the case. I think um, this technology they're using, while it may be the first time it's been in a device, I think this technology has been in place in many other areas and there's been vulnerabilities in how to get into that. And I thought that would be something good to focus on is um, how how secure do you see this? Is it you know um, is there any concern to uh, you know this device capturing your fingerprint even if it you know just stored it in the chip? You know is there any concerns from that point? And how secure is it? You know we've got fingerprints all over these devices. Um, plus you know there's going to be a print on the sensor itself. So. You know, as an iPhone user, how secure should we feel? You know, is is it really giving us any safety, or is it creating an, an easier way to get into my device? Well, what do you guys think? Well, um, let's jump in on the topic of liveness detection, which is the the term used in the biometric device community. Liveness detection has been around for a long time, and you know, a good sensor has that built in. So the fact that they have included that, that's not surprising. That should be expected. It should be standard equipment, if you will. The issue that I have is what is the security threat that the fingerprint sensor is trying to alleviate? Is it the fact that people don't secure their devices with a pin? 
and this is just to make a convenient way for people to lock their devices? Or is there more to it in that, is there going to be an API in which your fingerprint could access some sensitive data? So maybe your, your password database system could be unlocked with your, your fingerprint locally on the device. Or is it bigger than that, in that um, if you have an enterprise app, you could use your, your fingerprint to gain access to sensitive information as part of your job, for example. Uh, so it, it's unclear to me yet how this is going to be used, um, and that kind of information would help us figure out whether this is going to be a valuable component of the phone or not. Well, um, one one of the articles uh, that was in the in the, in the our discussion, uh, one of the German uh, individual, the Commissioner for Data Protection and Freedom of Information for Hamburg had a concern, and his concern was was with using fingerprints as an everyday use, everyday source of um, uh, authentication and really biometrics in general, in that unlike a password uh, or like a, a, a token device, your fingerprint never changes. Mm -hmm. or no, <coughs> really, your bi biometric sig signature doesn't change. And so if, if a, unlike say a hacker getting hold of a password or a token uh, device, if they got a hold of your fingerprint data, then that, they'd have that for the rest of your life. Right. So that was, that was one of his concerns. Is that Keep in mind the way these typically work. The device, when you register your fingerprint, uh, takes multiple copies and it creates not a representation, it, it creates a what's called a template. And that template is unique to you. And it doesn't take like a picture or an image of your of your fingerprint. It uses uh, bits of information and in, in the swirls and the patterns on your fingerprint to create this template. Templates can be, if I remember right, templates can be manufacturer specific. So just because you have a template generated by one device may not be useful to you elsewhere if you try to use it on a different thing to kind of forge an authentication. So, uh, templates have to be protected, certainly, and the databases that store them have to be protected. It sounds like Apple's kind of built it into the device, maybe as a write it once into memory and then do the comparison there in hardware uh, so that it can't be extracted. I don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what they are mm -hmm. reporting, and, and I, I have no reason to doubt that, and I think they're saying it up front because of all these concerns with NSA. Um, to get back to your point, though, on you know why introduce the fingerprint scanner, I, I really think it's a convenience thing more than anything. You know, um, and, and it's not that terribly difficult to type in a four-digit pin, and, and yet a four-digit pin isn't all that secure either. So, I, I think of the fingerprint kind of being the equivalent of that. Now, I don't use a four-digit pin. I use a much longer pin because I I just don't feel like four numbers is all that secure, and it's you know. When you do the four digit, you know it's just four digit. My passcode, you don't know the link, you know, so there's some unknown factor there as well. Um, what I'm excited about though, I'm really excited about the technology in that I think they can finally do two factor. There are some apps on my device where they have a separate pin code because there's you know they can access more sensitive information like Dropbox and things like that. So in theory, with this combination, you know, I have my fingerprint and a pin access information. Um, what I'm curious about is whether they're going to make it so that to unlock the phone, you could also enable that. You could say, I want this pin and I want the fingerprint. Because the, you know, the fingerprint is designed to be very easily done. Then I would feel comfortable using like a fingerprint and a four-digit pin. Otherwise, I just want to stay with the passcode I've got because I think it all well, is more secure. If, if you're going to ask for that from Apple, then you have to ask for the alarm code option. So if somebody's got a gun at your head and you you you, read, you unlock the device with your fingerprint, and then they say type in the pin. And oh, I type, type in the white code <laughs> and they call the cops code. I just give them the phone. I give them the pin. It's like here, here you go. I would just unlock it. Numbers this. Go. I, I would disable the, the fingerprint. I unlock everything. Say so here, you, you can have the phone. I mean, it's yeah, not so that much. To so me. there's not that much of that. So the only thing it. that this protects <laughs> is that if you misplace your phone, 
misplace your phone. They don't have, they don't know who it is. They don't know uh, whose finger is needed to unlock it. Needed. Then, okay. But if you have a pin, isn't that effectively the same? Well, and, and here's the thing, is that even really, maybe something's changed in iOS 7, but right now, as an iOS developer, I can plug this in to my computer, anybody's iPhone, and I can get the, you know, I get the serial number, and I can get, a lot of times they have their name registered in there. So, but don't they have to, don't you have to unlock the phone before you get that access? Because if I remember right, you yeah. I'm not certain. I'm because, not so sure. Because on my iTunes, when I moved to a different, when I took my, my iPod Touch, for example, moved it to a new computer, it would not sync until I un manually you know, unlocked the screen. I believe, now, to load code on a device, I have to unlock it, but I'm not sure I have to unlock it to actually see that serial number. I, I have to verify that. I, I think I can actually see that because I've had to load it on other people's personal devices and unbeknownst to me they had an off code on it. So I could get so far in the process, but then when I look at the code, I have to go in and say, hey, I need you to unlock this device for me so I can load it on there. So, right. so I, yeah. Kind of a rat. Well, I don't know that that helps the conversation. Here. Probably, probably not. But what I'm saying is I'm not sure I'm not sure the fingerprint scanner adds I, I guess it does to a to a certain degree, but to me this is just a this is a convenience factor, I think. And I think it it has the potential to increase security if it's done in a two-factor way. Otherwise, I think it's just another mechanism. I'm not sure, you know, I, I'll compare it to like the Android devices where you can do, you know, a pattern recognition or something. To me, it's, it's along those same lines. It's just another mechanism. <coughs> if you really want to increase the security, you'll allow us to combine things together if we choose. You know, a pin and a fingerprint, and all of a sudden, now you've got, you know, I think a lot more security there. Maybe. But I've not heard whether they're going to allow that or not. Well, I think one thing, uh, especially with security and privacy experts, that hurts Apple is how closed they are with their systems. They don't really tell you how it works. They assure you that it works in a specific way, but that's that's about it. And I think in the past, they, their assurances, have, they've, they've lost some trust from people because they said something worked some way and somebody discovered uh, something where they, Apple had either misinformed them or had outright lied about how something worked. Well, I think that, that, that hurts their trust a little bit with the security experts. A little bit. And also you have to be a, a developer in the program to get access to some information which you can't share with others until it's public. So. There could be a lot more that's already known to developers who are in the program that they're just not allowed to share. And I, I, I don't know, I'm not a biometrics person, but I don't know if there's a standard for fingerprint. Well, there's lots of hashing or, or whatever. But from my understanding, the way Apple does get the fingerprint is it's different than most devices get it. They use a different part of the finger. Apparently, they use the tip, I guess, of your finger on the home button. And the, flat part. Yeah. So, but that doesn't seem right because if they so, do that, they're going to get less. So I, I don't know. There, there was a, one of the articles mentions that that the part of the finger that Apple is using to get the fingerprint data is different than what like well, each would store is for fingerprint. Okay, data. maybe. So, but here's the here's the problem. Um, Fingerprint devices usually require a large population to use for a while, so you can get some useful data as to how well it works. Um, some of the research that's been done at the Biometrics Performance and Standards Lab uh, has been involved with inviting uh, the elderly to use these biometric devices because uh, various skin elasticity changes in age. And so the, some of the findings is uh, that some of the devices don't work well with older in, older adults because of that issue. And so now you're going to take a, a biometric device and they're going to sell a ton of these things and hand them out in the world. We'll have to actually see how effective and how useful they are when you have a large population using them. Well, when you bring up a good point, too. Um, so we often talk about how sometimes adding security creates a back door. Here's the thing. <coughs> You know, I enable my fingerprint scanner, and now I can't get in my phone, and I'm ticked off. I'm a loyal customer. I'm ticked off. So I call up Apple, and I'm like, I can't get in my phone. What do I need to provide them that allow me to unlock that phone? 
what's the sequence and how much information right. do I how do I verify my identity remotely to someone over the phone? Well, that's a valid question. And, I mean, and it might be that they have to have a pen as a backup. That that would be good. Something along those lines. Something yeah, right. to, to demonstrate that. I, yeah, because there are conditions where you know, hey, you've been sitting in the bathtub for a long time, your fingers are all right. <laughs> yeah. uh, it may not work. It may not well, work. This article does say it uses the tip print of your finger. So, um, I, yeah, that seems a little weak so. because there are fewer minutia points on the tip of your finger to get a good template. So, the error rates would probably be pretty high, both false, false positives and false negatives here. So. We're going to see how this works in the real population and, and see if their method is going to work with a large population. I have my doubts. And there's also a uh, thing in this article about you being able to use the Touch ID system to approve purchases. Yes, I did so. Yeah. I'm not sure how that, and, and there's a question on how that works. As well, well, right now on the device, yeah. when you make a purchase, you have to put in your iTunes password, right. which is oftentimes different than like the passcode yeah. and the pin used on like the phone. So that's very interesting as well because now you know you can get into to iTunes and make purchases. So again to go back to the example of a little kid, unlock her dad's phone, go make go buy a hundred dollar accessory. Which clearly yeah. means they're storing something remotely. It may not be their well, fingerprint, but it may be a there hand, an authentication token or yeah. or something like that somewhere remotely. So there is some sort of Remote. Well, it, it could just thing that is it could be just a simple assertion that I have verified that this person is the owner of the account. Make the make the payment go. Yes, which is another which would be another avenue of, of tax potential. Maybe that that yeah. I'm going to be curious to see. I imagine there's going to be some attacks that they come out. I'm interested to see how they will. You know. If they'll be able to just take the print right off the phone itself and reapply it using like a gummy bear or something, you know, there's the gummy bear attack. I, I'm, I, I, I feel like there's going to be something. There's going to at least be one type. There might be multiple. Well, there's like always yeah, one, 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 the yeah. Once the iPhone comes out, it will be interesting to see yeah. how long it takes for somebody to say, "Hey, look, I defeated the, I defeated the, the fingerprint." I, I don't think it'll take long. I, I really think. Yeah, I'm really thinking people are, are gearing up for it. Day, day one, day one, day one, day one, day one. Here's the attack. They're already playing it out. Yeah, they're already. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure they are. are. I'm sure they are. I'm just. It'll be interesting. To yeah. See, to see how long it takes. Yeah. You say day one. Day how many, many hours? How many hours? It's a matter of hours. It's a matter of hours to rush to publish the blog entry. How many hours from the release? Time of the phone until there's a phone until Well, it hasn't come out yet, <coughs> so the, the, you know, I'm sure some people got their hands on it. Maybe some early ones. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know how that works. I don't know how that works either. Unless so, you know, there's one that's been leaked. You know, but that's happened in the past. Yeah, you know, people have left them on a, you know, left them in a bar or something. Who you knows? <laughs> I can't imagine having a device, you know, under development that you just leave behind, but hey, <laughs> out in the public, but. Well, are there any Android, Android devices that have fingerprints? Uh, I've not seen any yet. Readers, I, mean, I, I think I think there there are separate attachments you can get yeah. for the USB ports. Well, there, there's a rumor in one of the articles the HTC One Max will be coming with one on the back of the smartphone. So yes. that'll be. I know Android supports um, uh, facial facial recognition. Yes. I'm not sure how well that works. It does not work. <laughs> you, can fool it, you can fool it with a photo because it only uses cool. one camera, so there's no two-dimensional aspect to it. If, it had, if you had your phone and it had a camera here and a camera here, you, you'd have better, better, not com completely safe, but better ability to do a stereoscopic image to do a 3D analysis. And I know that it uses a pen to type backup system as well, so if... Yes. So, so, so our conclusion here is we're always complaining about passwords and security, right? Passwords, you know, they're, they're weak, especially if the user creates them themselves, you know, and if you don't, you gotta use it safe and you gotta make it be a long password. You know, something like a fingerprint scan or something like biometrics is convenient. It would be nice if, if that's all it took, but we're not there yet, are we? We're not willing to say we're there yet. We're, we're still better off with the, we're, we're the good. We're, we're, I think we're good with the concept of multi-factor authentication. 
and it's just figuring out what the right factors are to do it. Biometrics work in some situations, but not for everybody. And the passwords work in some situations, but not for everybody. And so there's a combination is good. Uh, it's there's always like that combination. convenience versus security yeah. Yeah. aspect and yep. all that. So yeah. All right. And that's what gets you with the fingerprint. It's it's really convenient, and that makes you question how secure. When something's really convenient, oftentimes it's not as secure. All right. So we'll, we'll see. I, like you said, day one, probably four hours on day one or something. We'll we'll know more. It makes you wonder what <laughs> I told you. I kind of thought it'll hold up to your eye. Oh, uh, retina <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well. I think that's, I think we've, we've talked about that enough. So thanks, Mike Hill, Keith Watson. I'm Preston Wiley. Have a safe and secure day.